guys welcome back to my top 10 video games list of all time in the year of 2020 so i'm really excited to share share my top 10 video games of all time with you guys and i'm trying to try to do this uh, in a yearly series to see how much my taste of video games have changed over the years so let's get down to business so before we start off the list i would like to just give out give out some housekeeping rules so there are three rules the first rule is that we're only counting only single player games games that have the defined start and end so games like minecraft tetris dota those games are not going to be included even though they're masterpieces of themselves secondly the rule is i must have finished the game so there's a lot of games that is in my backlog that i haven't finished yet games like persona 3 chrono trigger last stranding and the third and final rule is that we will try not to add multiple games from the same franchise before we officially get right down to business, I just want to share with you my top 10 which I created last year just to showcase the, the quick contrast between last year's opinion and this year's opinion. So starting at number 10, we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch. For number 9, we have Portal 2. For number 8, we have Final Fantasy 7. For number 7, we have Super Mario Odyssey. For number 6, we have Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology. For number 5, we have Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward. Number 4, we have Octopath Traveler. Number 3, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Number 2, we have Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. And for number 1, we have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So as you can see, we have already broken some of the rules that we have set for this year. And as you can tell from my list, it's mainly Nintendo games. So hopefully we get to see some new faces in the, in the list. So as of 25 July 2020, I've actually finished 98 different video games that I've catalogued and out of these 98 games, I've actually shortlisted 19 games. Which it was a very very hard decision as I've played so many good games in my lifetime. So starting at number 10, we have Bioshock for the PC. So this is a game that I have a lot of movement in my top video game list. When I first finished it in 2015, I didn't, re I didn't really have a mess a huge library of completed games at the point so this is one of those games that I always have heard great things about and when I finish it 12 hours later I totally can see why this has always been a staple when someone asks me what are my favorite video games of all time it told a story that, that can only be truly told in video games the interactivity within the dystopian city of Rapture is truly ahead of its time just traversing the city it gives out a very eerie and scary atmosphere as you uncover the history and context of Rapture. And you do that by exploring the place, looking at various landmarks and graffiti, and while listening to like audio logs. And then suddenly you are attacked by your enemy, which brings me to the excellent first person shooter gameplay. The mix of plasmas and a huge uh, arsenal of weapons really allows for many weak, different wacky interactions, which leads to a lot of experimentation. The only pity I would say is when I pl first played the game, I was uh, 17 years old and I didn't really understand all the themes that the game was getting to such as society, uh, rules and uh, choices. If I played the game this year, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten more out of the meta commentary and the social commentary aspect of the game that it was going for. But I digress, still absolutely deserve to be in my top 10. Coming in at number 9, we have Bravely Default for the Nintendo 3DS. So a theme of a theme of this video is that a lot a lot of the games I played that I put in my top ten is actually games that I finished this year. So recency bias, you know. Anyway, uh, I know I wanted a 3DS JRPG on this list, and it's honestly a toss up between Bravely Default and Radiant Historia, which I put last year. But I end up putting Bravely Default. I don't know whether it's the recency bias, but then I literally just finished this game last month, so I, I it's still fresh in my head. And I guess. Bravely Default 2 is coming out this year, so let's just throw Bravely Default a bone. Bravely Default is a classic JRPG game where there are 4 heroes trying to save the world and stuff. Typical stuff, the story does get its various twists and turns. You do get to transverse a very varied overworld with a lot of, a lot of standout locations. I'll be remiss if I didn't mention the amazing soundtrack that accompanies the whole game. Composer Revo, also known for his like, work in Attack of Titan soundtrack, is truly a musical genius. This game has my favourite final boss team, period. I'm glad to remind y'all that he's coming back to compose Bravely Default 2. The only grab I have uh, with the soundtrack is the actual hardware of the 3DS. The speaker and the, the headphone jack 
are way too soft so it's really hard to like crank up the volume uh, the combat is also very interesting firstly there's the drop system from Final Fantasy V which allows the character to have a main drop and in this game you can also have a sub drop so you can have like a time mage main drop while being able to use the thief's ability the main gimmick of the game is that you get to default and brave which are commands that either give you a BP at the expense of not being able to move during that turn while also reducing damage or brave commands which allows you to do multiple actions in a turn at the expense of a BP this is an integral part of brave and default system as you weigh the risk of brave and default uh, and the interesting thing is your opponents also get to brave and default too now I also need to mention that uh, the main criticism of this game is the second part which let's say can be time consuming and repetitive uh, I don't want to spoil anything but I'll, I'll say in my opinion it's, it's fine it's fine it's not the most glamorous part of the game but it's fine I haven't started on briefly second yet but I think I'll be starting it uh, next year so yeah really looking forward to playing the sequel coming in at number 8 we have Okami HD this is one of the best non-Zelda Zelda games out there in my opinion this is a better Zelda game than Breath of the Wild now let me just start by saying that just because this game uses the Zelda formula and the action adventure genre does not make this game stale or lack of originality in any way I think the best way is to show this game in action you can you see like this style that art style that will truly make this art style truly makes this one of the most unique setting I've ever played in a video game. The Celestial Brush is a great mechanic where you can draw symbols to do special moves and it's used perfectly in exploration as well as in combat. And this world is just begging to be explored. The music is also really beautifully Japanese. I really dig the whole Japan inspired culture, locales and laws. The dungeons are very well designed, the bosses are fun to figure out. The only main gripe I have with the game is that it can be a bit too easy and I, I would say it's, it's very easy. Uh, this game is often on sale so you can find it on all major platforms. I would personally recommend the Switch version for its touch controls in portable mode as well as the HD RAM mode. Do not skip this game if you are a Zelda fan or a fan of the genre. Coming at number 7, we have Zero Escape Virtual's Last Reward. So I'm really excited to talk about this one as this is probably the least popular game on this list. This is a visual novel game that involves a group of participants in a game where their goals are to escape the game. Now as this game is really story based, any mention of the plot details may actually ruin anyone's enjoyment of the series. So I will not divulge any, any more story details. I will just say the entire series have kept me up at night, had me searching for forums regarding the plot after I finished the game, this is my favorite visual novel series ever and I've played plenty, I've played Phoenix Wright, I've played Danganronpa so if you want to get into this series, you have to start from 9, persons, nine hour 9 person 9 doors and you can actually uh, find it in the, the recent bundle uh, known as the Zero Escape Nonary Games and you can get a compilation in most PlayStation platforms as well as PC and the writer actually has a new game out last year which is the AI The Somnium Files, which I'm definitely trying to finish by the end of this year. I haven't started it yet though, so I'm really excited to start playing uh, the writer's newest game. But this is one of the best visual novels ever. Coming in at number 6, we have Final Fantasy X. So just, just to go on a quick tangent, I got this game around October of last year, and I thought I was never going to get to it. I have zero intentions of playing it this year. However, um, there, there, was a, there was a little game coming out this year, it's called Final Fantasy VII Remake which was set to release globally on April 10. However, shortly before its release, the government decided to carry out stay-home orders because of the, the, is the, the issues outside. Because of the, the illness. Uh. Basically, any non-essential services can't be carried out. What, 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 what happened was, uh, I couldn't collect the game on launch day in the retail shop. So that means I, I, I wasn't able to play the game on launch day which was very very upset, I was very very upset about it this ended up opening up a slot for me to play another JRPG and she, since I was basically desperate for any Final Fantasy content I decided to clear this game out of my backlog the only thing I've known about this game prior to the prior to playing it is the infamous Tedious Love scene which gave me the impression that I'll be controlling a very cheesy happy-go-lucky JRPG protagonist 
However, the main reason I really like this game is my personal attachment to Tidus as a character. I truly relate to his trials and tribulations in this game and it really really made me enjoy the game a lot. It's his character growth. Just a quick summary of what I like about this game, uh, it has a very fun and fluid combat system, you are able to swap players in and out, and all the party members have their own thing, so it, it's really a godsend to be able to swap party members in and out of party, and you can also like manipulate the turns, yeah. Um, the themes and setting of this game is also very interesting, it's a mix between like medieval and like futuristic kind of thing, so I really, I really like the settings. And uh, the voice acting is really really good in my opinion, despite the popular opinion that it sucks. Um, obviously there's a couple of flaws, um, mainly a very linear open open world, very linear over world. You're not able to skip the cutscenes, some cutscenes, and the random encounters are insane. But the child of the game really outweighs all the flaws in my opinion. I will go on the record and say this is my favourite full length Final Fantasy game. It beats out 6, it beats out 7. So coming in at number 5, we have the Witcher 3 WoW Hunt. So if you can tell by now, I really love my JRPGs, I really do. And I like all the magical overpowered swords that slays the ultimate evil and whatnot. But Witcher 3 really sold me on what a western medieval game can really accomplish. So the, um, the reason I picked up this game may actually surprise some of you. Uh, I got to know this game from uh, a book called Blood, Sweat and Pixels which provides behind the scenes accounts on video game development and one of those chapters focused on the development of The Witcher 3 um, that chapter itself made me a fan of CD Projekt Red as they, they, they show the attention detail in every aspect of developing the game and I was really tempted to play Witcher 3 however because I was still serving the army I didn't really have time to play a 200 hours RPG on a PC or any other consoles so fast forward to E3 of last year, 2019, and the switcher was announced. I was not that thrilled at first, but I was very very intrigued. And fast forward, I went to a video game expo, where I got to do a lot of stuff like, uh, for instance, playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo, and CD Projekt Red was showcasing Cyberpunk 2077. Before the presentation, they, they showed a, a short trailer for Witcher 3 on the Switch, and at that point that I was really really tempted to play it. Because I was few, I was in a room where like most of the people are CD Projekt Red fans, so I'm pretty sure they they have all played Witcher 3 at some point or the other. And shortly after, uh, a lot of the reviews for the Switch version came out. And after I, after I saw some of the reviews that say it was it was a pretty decent port, I I decided to give it a try. And boy oh boy, it was really some of the best weeks I had. I was able to bring the Switcher with me to camp, and there truly wasn't a dull moment in camp anymore. I was able to do a little bit of quest here and there, and it was really the best best part of my time in Ken. Now you probably don't need me to tell you why this game is amazing. There are tens and dozens of more qualified people out there. But what I can tell you is this is truly an amazing package for what it's worth. Um now, now, now just in case you're wondering, you see this date right here. Uh I finished the game on 30 December 2019. This isn't even counting the um, the free DLCs uh, included in the Switch package. This is just for the main game. It took me an additional one and a half month to finish the different side quests as well as all the DLC storylines. Definitely one of the best video games of our generation and such a solid price. I really cannot wait for Cyberpunk 2077. Coming in at number 4, we have Fire Emblem Three Houses. Alright, I'll admit it right now. The main reason I gave this game a try was because Byleth made it to Smash. Just like many, of the, many on the internet, I was very, very upset at the announcement of another Fire Emblem character in Smash Bros. But after playing him or her I, for a while, I actually really liked the, the playstyle of her and I really really loved the music that came from this game so I was like, okay, why, why not, let's just, let's just give it a try This game really was my go-to while all my friends were all playing Animal Crossing New Horizon I just couldn't put this game down I love the professor as aspect of it where you have to teach and instruct a bunch of uh, newbies that all has potential to shine in battle So the characters is really the highlight of this game in my opinion all have their own unique traits and backstory that is really really interesting when you uh, delve deep into it. One of my favourite parts of the game is uh, getting to see everyone's support conversation. The voice acting is also a huge plus, everyone has really really good voice acting and which is a very very huge step up from Awakening. Today's dinner is steak and
banana cake that's yummy yum. Now it's time to fill my tummy tummy tum. Oh, this mountain of sweets and treats that I long to eat. Oh, stacks of steaks and cakes and crumbs and yums. I hope I'm not interrupting. Uh, however, I just want to share my first experience when I cleared the game. I was really, really angry actually. I chose the blue lion route and I ended up feeling rather empty after the last climatic battle. I felt like even putting in 80 hours of the game and finishing the route, I didn't truly felt satisfied. Which really tempted me to try another route. And I can say I definitely feel a, a bit more satisfaction the second time I played it. However, I'm still awaiting my closure, which is why I may have to finish all the routes in order to truly feel really, really satisfied. Anyway, this is a fantastic game, in my opinion, the best first party Switch game, in my opinion. Coming in at number 3 is Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. So, as of this recording, this is the latest game I've ever finished. Um, I finished it on 7 July 2020, so it's like 2 weeks ago. So, I'd like to add that this may just be an effect of recency bias. But damn, is this game so fun. I can't, I, I don't even know where to start. Okay. The story is great, the cast is really fun, it feels like a group of friends that you really enjoy going on an adventure with. Everyone has their own unique backgrounds and personality, and they are diverse enough in battle that you can almost always find yourself counting on everybody. So when I remember when I first got every party members around the mid game, I thought to myself, hmm, I probably wouldn't ever use this character again because it's so weak right? But out of nowhere a boss will prove me wrong. All of a sudden, the weak characters have a like a, have a place to shine. There's also like this uh the fun size forge system, which is really really fun. I'm trying to min max everybody, trying to get the right equipment for each of the party members. Um, the overworld and locales in the game is also very, very delightful. I love every single location and towns. Even the side characters are written really really well. The place just feels alive. The best part for most of the game, in my opinion, is that you never really need to grind. There's no random encounters, the bosses in this game requires a lot more strategy than just raw numbers and stats. The game is also filled up with content. I put in close to around 70 hours in the game and I have fun 90% of the time. This is my favorite full length JRPG game ever. Just a quick note guys, it has just been announced that Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of Elusive 8, the definitive edition of this game will also be out on other platforms soon. So. Go pick up this game because this game is really really good. Okay, so we have come to the toughest part of this video for me. It's deciding which is number one and which is number two. And number two we have Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Okay, let me just address the elephant in the room. Why is there two games in one spot? Okay. I personally feel both games are so similar and yet so different that they deserve to be on this spot. If any of these two games, uh, if I if I just forget, if I just discard one of them, I just feel bad. I can't I can't forgive myself for not putting one or the other. So, they, these two games definitely deserve to be here. Personally, there's only one word you need to describe both of them, and it's the word fun. The tight movement of Mario mixed with the gravity twisting, spherical platforming, is a is a joy to behold. The presentation of this game is is superb. In my opinion, it still holds up to this game. The graphics. And the orchestral soundtrack is simply mesmerizing. These two games right here is the magnum opus of 3D platforming. And to this day, it has not been matched. Uh, uh, the Galaxy game uh, differs from Mario 64 and Odyssey in a sense that it is far more linear. Uh, there's, like a the, there's, a, there's like a defined start and end to the game. And personally, I really like the linearity of Galaxy 1 and 2 than the more open-ended approach in 64 and Odyssey. I like when my platforming games is like an intricate obstacle course that gives me the thrill of perfectly timing my jumps and clearing all the obstacles in the course. I, will, I, also, I also find that the setting of Galaxy felt more epic than Odyssey. I think it's the scale of the world or something like that. I think it's also the presentation that like you have like in Galaxy you have like some different cuts, different camera cuts and cinematics as you jump from planet to planet. And I really really like the aspect of that. And I'm right now I'm in the camp of wanting a Galaxy 3 more than Odyssey 2. And that's just a, that's just my opinion. I think both games will be great. In fact both games are great. Every single minute spent on this game has like brought me immense happiness. Now I really want to put these two games as my number one, but it's honestly interchangeable with my number one. 
if you're talking about pure unadul unadulterated video game fun, I think Galaxy 1 and 2 will take the cake over number 1. No questions asked. It's simply a masterpiece, and I highly recommend for everyone to play it. Hopefully the heavily rumored Mario 35 Anniversary Collection comes to fruition. Cause I really really want to start playing this game again. And I, and I don't really want to hook up my Wii to play it. And we have finally got down to number 1. So it is the Final Fantasy 7 Remake. So about the housekeeping rule of no multiple games from the same franchise. Well you know, you know the broken is meant to be limit. The limit is meant to be broken. Okay? The game, this game right here is the single greatest video game I ever played in my life. To set the stage, I was incredibly hyped to play this game. When I saw the state of play trailer last year, that that was insane. That trailer made me really want to play the game right then and then. The visuals, you know, just the new battle system really sold me on the idea. And that, that particular trailer compelled me to finish the original Final Fantasy VII, which I ended up really really liking a lot. In fact, for my previous list, the 2019 list, you know, you can tell I I, I, was, I put it in number 8. I really really lo love the game. I think part of the enjoyment I liked from the original Final Fantasy VII Remake was the setting and the themes. Because it wasn't a medieval setting, you know, it was like more of a steampunk kind of feel. And it was really different from all the Final Fantasy games I've played before. But the Square Enix marketing team just keep like giving us more and more of all those trailers. And I would already say from right, right now, I, I didn't have a PSP, okay? I wasn't a really big PlayStation fanboy. So this is, this is that game that made me really want a PS4. And guess what guys? I wasn't willing to wait a full year for this game to go multi-platform, okay? I was dead set on finishing this game this year. As I don't want any spoilers, you know. Square Enix has mentioned that some part of the games will, will be different from the original, which is why I really didn't want to get spoiled for this amazing game. So as mentioned, during the Final Fantasy X part, I didn't really get a chance to play on launch day, even though I pre-ordered the game. And uh, that was because I had to borrow my friend's PS4, as Afro mentioned, I didn't have a PS4. So when I did return home with all the consoles and the games, I played it from morning to night for 3 days straight. And I can tell you right now, this game did not disappoint one bit. Everything I like about the original Final Fantasy VII is just expanded to the extreme. All the, all the themes of environment, cooperation, the rich and poor dynamic, and all the sci-fi technology stuff. This game just breathed new life into all of them, it makes the entire game feel more grand. And the plot of this game is so magnificently written with all the all the different commentaries, all the social commentary, all the meta commentary, and all the characters are so well written. They all they're all so well written and perf and performed by really really good voice actors. They all feel like really real people. And all the emotional beats of the game really hit like a truck over and over again. Like it was just insane. And the presentation of this game simply outrageous. I can't even phantom how much was needed to develop this game. The budget of this game must have been insane. Because the attention to every the attention to detail in every single part of the game is incredible. And it's only punctuated by the single greatest soundtrack in video game history. It's not even close. Y'all gotta look at the bigger picture here. Nothing worth fighting for was ever won without sacrifice. Help me! <laughs> Like, all the bosses have their, have their own teams, and every every boss has their own transitional phases. It's just absolutely insane. And the presentation really created like a very cinematic feel to the game. The change from cutscene to gameplay is so fluid. The part where you slow down and select your options and all the particles effects and shit. The combat feels really really super badass. And being able to instantly switch from one party member to the other, amazing. Just absolutely amazing. And I'll tell you this right now, you know, when I finished the game, I had post game depression for at least a week and a plus. I spent an unhealthy amount of time listening to podcast into podcast reviews and reading all the Reddit posts left and right. 
This game is just simply perfect. However, I'd like to add the point right now that this game will probably have the highest variance to move about in future lists. As much of the legacy of this game will solely depend on the future sequels. Because this game is a multi-part series that will retell the story of Final Fantasy VII original. If the next part is uh, Dumpster Fire, it will leave a really sour taste sour taste you know that would negatively impact the legacy of this game but as of right now as of 25 july 2020 i'm incredibly excited for the future of final fantasy 7 remake series you know i have a feeling this game will be a very pivotal part in the video game history all the remakes will forever be divided into two categories the remakes that came before this game and the remakes that came after this game if you have not if you have played the game you know what i mean because it's that influential in the video game history. If you're hoping to play this game and you're wondering yourself, do I need to play the original one first? I would recommend you to play the original one first. It's on all platforms essentially. It's, on, it's available on the PC as well. Play the original one first and then play Crisis Core on the PSP. That would be the best way to enjoy the game. But at the, at the very least, you should play the original one first before jumping into this game. And with that, we have come to the end of this top 10 list. Please let me know in the comment section below what your top 10 favorite games of all time in the year of 2020. Please smash the like button if you like this video and subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with any gaming related videos I will be publishing here. So long guys, so long.